Svi hvala puno na divnoj saradnji i na ovoj i kao i na svim ostalim TGI konferencijama, kao i uvek zadovoljstvo je sarađivati sa vama. Također i da zamolim, da pozdravim ostale naše medijske sponzore, e-kapiju, časopis industrija, Serbia Energy Mining, CEE. Hvala, uvek je zadovoljstvo sarađivati sa vama. Sjajno, imamo još možda troje četvoro dole na stolicama, molim vas, ustanite svi, pređite za stolove napred. Dok ste vi ručali, mi smo sve čaše i flaše promenili, baš zato da možete da se osvežite vodom. Please, ladies and gentlemen, on the chairs, please come, come on the table. Odlično. E, sad panel može da počne. Dajem reč našem sledećem moderatoru, Nenadu Stankoviću, divnom našem advokatu s kojim imamo predivnu saradnju na ovim našim svim TGI konferencijama. Dajem reč i panel može da počne. Hvala puno. Hvala, Jakoda. Drago mi je što ste ipak ostali na konferenciji i postoje ručka. Današnja tema i moj panel su nešto što je zaista pravno zanimljivo i pokušat ćemo danas da vam predstavimo kako to zaista izgleda. Znači, do sad smo čuli da negde postoji, postoje rezerve, da je moguće raditi istraživanje na duži rok eksploataciju, ali postoje se pitanje kako naći novac i kako da to zaista počne da radi. Danas su sa mnom Janko Nikolić, dr. Milan Parivodić i Bojan Čepić, znači tri advokata i jedan stručnjak za poreze, a tema je balans između projektnog finansiranja i pravnog okvira za rad. Janko Parivodić, U stvari, mi nismo prvi put na panelu, mi smo skoro svake godine na panelu i svake godine ova priča dobija neku drugu dimenziju. Pa vi, Janko, šta se to promenilo od prošle godine da dođemo do ove teme? May I switch to English? The question is, what has changed since the last year in terms of regulatory framework or overall industry? I think we have seen more investments, um, we have seen um, the overall recognition that the legal framework is good. Um, this morning we've seen um, indicators that Serbia is almost stopping the list in terms of um, accommodative um, legal framework, which obviously, you know, being lawyers will find um, room for improvement everywhere, uh, but I think it's fair to acknowledge that we have um, a solid framework, um, the Mining Act from 2015 is a long way from the Mining Act of 1995, which for those of you who do not know, uh, for the first time um, recognized the right of uh, private entities to hold mining rights. We've had uh, one more Mining Act in the interim, 2011, and in 2015 the current framework um, came into place. And um, in general, when we talk about legal framework, um, we need to mention this particular piece of legislation, but also law on investments, 2015. Some of my, some of my colleagues here have played a role in drafting that um, piece of legislation. Um, PPP Act, which since 2011 enables um, private actors to partner up with um, the state and we have a number of regulations which uh, are conducive to mining investments. When we look forward, firstly, obviously, acknowledging positive things that we have at the moment. Um, going forward, we can take some good advice from more developed, um, or if we can say, um, older jurisdictions which have seen more mining investments, um, such as Canada, such as Australia, um, we can take some lessons from them as well. Um, namely, what we have in those countries is the combination of different legal tools, different um, complementary legislation, um, and importantly, we also have investments agreements which complement um, 
legal framework in a way where a private sector, a private mining company enters into a long-term agreement with, um, with the partner state. Some of these things can be um, more entrenched in Serbia. We can, well, utilize the existing legal framework to build onto it, to um, um, have more um, investments, investment agreements um, and to generally um, ease up on certain things such as um, taxation, which one of my colleagues will talk about. But those are just the preliminary remarks. Thank you very much. Um, and now we, we can talk a little bit about bankability and whether some project can be a bankable and eligible for financing. And one of the issues, at least I am meeting in practice, is issues of servitudes and issues of possibility to pledge or to make a mortgage over as much property as possible. Milane, you participated in almost every reform of the civil law and other areas of law from, from 2000 until here. Could you, could you tell us something more about this? Um, well, you, you're, you're, you, you pose the question actually about servitudes and uh, mortgages. And that's, that's, a, that's a very specific question. And I would have, in talking about mortgaging, uh, you're talking about mortgaging mining rights. Is that your question? Well, that's, I, I didn't plan actually to talk about it, but that's, that's a very interesting question. And um, that comes back to a legal question. When does a deposit become a separate thing, zasebna stvar, in a civil law sense of the word? Kad poste zasebna stvar? And I would say that a deposit, uh, once confirmed by the state, basically by the state certificate of resources and reserves, that is the moment when there is a state confirmation that it has become a separate thing. Um, probably if, if uh, you know, actually we are always talking, when we talk about the nature of the permit issued by the state to an investor, we're talking of an administrative permit. But an administrative permit is only one angle of um, of, of, of the entitlements which it carries, in the sense that actually um, I would say that a mining right, looking from a civil law standpoint, is something similar to usus fructus, the right, of, uh, right to use and exploit, uh, in the sense that with the moment of separation of the ore from uh, F from the from earth it becomes the ownership of the mining company and in that sense it is similar to usus fructus but that's that's a completely different thing we, we could as lawyers you know uh, talk for hours about it but wh what i wanted to say a little bit about is we have a very interesting title of this session and it is funding it's about funding a project and the law funding the project and the law when you look at that, it's quite an elusive question, funding and the law. But when you look at it systematically, and I, 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 from, from, from some several years of my experience in, in this field, each one of us has to look at a project systematically, understanding the entire ecosystem of a private project. And when we look at it from an aspect of an entire ecosystem, which is needed to function properly and in concert to make a project happen, uh, then things uh, become conducive to uh, realizing a project. And when I talk about the ecosystem, um, I think it is critically important that um, who, who are the actors in, in the ecosystem? It is nas naturally, it's an investor who has first explored and maybe one day div uh, discovered something. Then there is the state, which has its political aspect, which has its uh, uh, civil service aspect, and there, is, there, there are laws which need to be applied. Um, 
Before, the situation was quite simple in the sense that the state controlled the companies, mining companies, it controlled uh, the state itself naturally. Um, the laws were written for those public companies and it was, it was all quite simple. And with a nod of the head of the political party, it could have been done provided a, a discovery was made. Now, in a, in, in a market system, it gets much more complicated in the sense that you have investors, you have the state and its laws, then you have the banks. You, you need to raise money. And for those banks to raise money, they need clean legal opinions from lawyers. And uh, then you have the self-regulation of the industry, which is in a very nascent uh, shape in Serbia. Uh, in the world, you have self-regulation as a very important aspect. Then you have the stock exchange. Um, and looking at all that, investors, the state, stock exchange, self-regulation of the industry, lawyers, then there is the competent person, a critical aspect, and there are the banks. It is very important. Um, you, you have the service providers, I mean service providers or uh, facilitators, which is banks, they give money. The stock exchange also raises, is used for raising money. The competent persons are those <coughs> whose opinion is respected and uh, believed by the financial institutions and by the stock exchange. Then there are the lawyers who also have to provide a positive legal opinion. Then there is self-regulation by the industry, which is typically by standards above the regulation of the states. And then there is the state, naturally, with its laws. Um, the point that I want to make is that all of these actors of the ecosystem, all of them must have one paramount idea when discussing and thinking about their role in the project. And that is that all of them are on the same job of making the project happen. They're all on the same job of making the project happen, including the investor, including the state, and all the other facilitating actors. In that sense, the role of the state, you know, in, in the previous times, there has been a very strong engineering aspect of the mining law. Very strong engineering aspect of the mining law. And lawyers actually had a lower hand to a certain extent. It was more the role of the state was to prove the discovery. It was not the competent person. Uh, the role of the state was to confirm feasibility of the project which again in, in a modern system is not the case. Um, the role of the state of course still is the allocation of the exploitation field, the giving of the exploitation permit. But the role of the state was not in the previous times legal security. Legal security, giving legal security to investors was not an issue in, in communist mining laws. So. Yes, so, so that makes a huge difference in the sense that the new role of the state is exactly to give legal security. And that legal aspect of a mining law is increasing in importance. Whereas the engineering aspects should not so much deal with the questions of proof of discovery or feasibility because this is done by independent uh, professionals like the competent persons and then verified by the stock exchange by the banks and so forth so so the state basically in my opinion should pay particular attention in the future to giving legal security and that also includes investment agreements and a very clear security of tenure giving such legal security that it secures further investment that, that the state becomes actually an agent of, of development. Then naturally, the key duty of the state is safety of the workers and uh, the safety of the environment and the people around to secure accurate reports uh, from accurate reports on what has been discovered 
and supervision of all those activities, and in case, take away the permit if the investor is not behaving properly. So with this, I will stop and uh, we can then continue. Okay, thank you very much, Mona. Well, uh, Bona, this area is somehow murky for me and I'm not really expert for the tax, tax issues and when I'm we're, we're advising someone to enter into the investment or to raise the project funding, yes, we are discussing the legal issues, we are discussing whether the old permits and licenses are in place and yes, we're discussing bilateral investment treaties and how the investor should be secured and I agree that in, invest, in, in, in communist era it was no any security for the investors because there is no investors but from the tax standpoint of view, how it looks like? Thanks. Um, from the tax point of view, what uh, we are witnessing in the uh, recent period is the uh, change in the tax legislation in Serbia, uh, mostly to become in line with the EU regulations. Uh, that applies both to, especially to VAT, uh, but also goes along with the corporate income tax and other uh, forms of taxation. Um, what we see in practice is that uh, when the foreign investors um, are planning their investment in Serbia, for example in mining sector or also in other uh, sectors, uh, is basically uh, they're looking uh, for the, some kind of certainty, whether they are in any how uh, certain about their tax position in Serbia. Once they make the investment, what's going to happen <coughs> with their tax liabilities, What's, what's going to be the approach of the tax authorities? Are they going to be safe if, if anything goes wrong and they go to the court and so on? Uh, what in Serbia there is, a, I would say also in uh, the countries in the region, uh, there, is a, there are some changes uh, that happened recently. There are also some changes that are announced to happen uh, hopefully soon. For example, when it comes to uh, VAT, what, what's happened recently is that we aligned the, the rules as much as possible with the EU rules, especially when it comes to the place of supply of services, taxation and so on. And also what's important for foreign, foreign investors is, for example, in the construction industry, for if you have like um, some kind of um, subcontractors who are uh, constructing the uh, providing any kind of construction services, their services are usually not subject to VAT. Instead of charging VAT from the subcontractor to the main contractor to the investor, it is the investor who just applies so-called reverse charge VAT mechanism. What's important with this is that this VAT is cash neutral and is cost neutral. So it's